What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And what I want you to remember about this video is we're going to be focusing on the solution, okay? So real quick, some of you know I announced it on my other channel or if you follow me on Instagram, if you're not following me on Instagram, don't know why, go follow me at The Rewired Soul. Uh, I took a secret trip to Los Angeles to go to the Scientology Museum of Psychiatry. It was wild. Anyways, that video will be posted on this channel very soon. I'm not used to editing these vlog type videos, so sorry it's taking me a little bit longer. All right, but anyways, those of you who missed it, yesterday, Jake Paul was trending for his somewhat bad take on anxiety. Depending on who you ask, it was a really bad take on anxiety. And I'm gonna link up in the info card and down in the description um, the video I did on that tweet and how YouTubers like Leon Lush and others reacted to it. Um, I made a video about that last night. It's over on the other channel. Go check it out. Make sure you subscribe to that channel. All right, but anyways, anyways, um, Mike, how do you say his name? Mike Majlak? Majlak? <laughs> when I say it, it reminds me of Aflac. You know, <laughs> okay, anyways, he uh, he stuck up for Jake Paul. So those of you who don't know who Mike is, Mike is a co-host on Logan Paul's podcast, Impulsive, and Mike was originally hired, I think, to be like somewhat of Logan Paul's babysitter to keep him out of trouble and stuff like that, but Mike has become his own type of influencer himself. Um, he, does, he has his own channel now and everything like that. But anyways, while Jake Paul was getting all this backlash over his anxiety uh, tweet, um, Mike said this, he said, I know Jake to be someone like me who suffers from anxiety and panic attacks. Who are these mental health warriors to tell someone how to explain their feelings and coping tactics? Ask yourselves, are y'all helping? So I'm gonna circle back to that in a second, okay? Like um, those of you who don't know me, I have a generalized anxiety disorder. I'm not a licensed therapist or psychiatrist or anything. I just share my opinions like everybody else is doing and try to increase some awareness and talk about it from a few different angles, all right? But anyways, one of our subscribers here, Matt, great guy, Matt, love you, Matt. He said, I don't think a lot of people are calling him out because of his quote unquote anxiety. They're calling him out because he lives in a snow globe away from real life issues. It's annoying when influencers try to tell regular people how to cope when in reality they have no idea what it's like. And Mike replied, this is the dumbest stuff I've ever read. This, this thought that you have that influencers are any different from the rest of us is so misguided. They struggle the same way you do, homie. All right, now this is a bad take, okay? Like in my other video, I discussed Hanlon's razor and I don't think Jake Paul did anything maliciously. He is a, a dumb kid, but Hanlon's razor teaches us never attribute to malice, which can easily be attributed to stupidity. All right, so no, I don't think Jake Paul's was like, hey, I'm gonna piss people off about anxiety. No, just a dumb kid, said some stuff about anxiety, people weren't happy about it. But this, this right here from Mike, now that, that is dumb. So his original tweet saying like you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't judge somebody else for how they cope with their anxiety. I 100% agree. We're all different. What works for you might not work for me and vice versa, right? Like one of the things that helps my anxiety a ton is meditation, okay? And there is a vast majority of you out there who's like, meditation doesn't work. And it's like, all right, well, that works for me. For some of you, you know, therapy um, might be better. I do therapy too. I do, I do the whole gambit of things, right? But anyways, like I, like I said, I somewhat agree with what Mike was saying right there. His second one is so disconnected from reality. Like this is something that a lot of big millionaire YouTubers or even hundreds of thousandaires YouTubers just don't understand. They don't understand how disconnected it is, right? So like I, I, I try to make it, you know, more of a conversation that Yes, celebrities can be depressed. Yes, celebrities can have anxiety. Like a lot of us sit here and we're like, oh, well if I had all that stuff, I wouldn't be depressed. I wouldn't be uh, anxious, all this other stuff, right? Well, there's a little something called hedonic adaptation. So if you're sitting there, you know, depressed, um, sad about your lack of money, your lack of resources because of money, when you get that money, there eventually comes a time where that amount of money is no longer satisfying to you and it just becomes the norm, okay? So that's hedonic adaptation. But what Mike doesn't realize right here, um, especially when replying to that tweet, is that 
these, not just YouTubers, but celebrities and everything like that, the reason why your average person gets so offended is because not all of us have the resources to get mental health help, okay? Like they don't understand the privileged position that they are in. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of celebrities and influencers work their butts off to get where they are, but a lot of them forget or they never even knew what it was like. Like, for example, Jake Paul and Logan Paul, they grew up in a, uh, you know, a suburban, you know, household, you know, whatever. Um, we learned from the Shane Dawson series that their family's kind of wacky, right? But I guarantee those kids had health insurance their entire lives, right? And then when they were teenagers, they became these gigantic YouTubers. These two never had to worry about affording mental health care, about affording mental health medications, about affording going to therapy, right? And that's where Mike's tweet is just so far out there that that kind of stuff bumps me out. Because here's the thing, when you have that kind of massive audience and you're talking about this stuff, like it, it's really a slap in the face. You know what I mean? Like I'm fortunate enough, like through the um, uh, affiliate program I do with BetterHelp, they provide me with free therapy. And thank God, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into politics right now. If you want, go check out Tiffany Ferg's video on Bernie Sanders for, for 2020. I, I myself am a, am a Bernie supporter. But like, anyways, like, my health insurance, I have health insurance at my full-time job, and it's decent, but it's expensive as hell. Like, to cover me and my son, and then I got all these copays and deductibles. I went to go refill my mental health medications after I got my health insurance, and it was more expensive than the uh, Kroger Pharmacy discount program that I was on before I had insurance. Like, think about that for a second. So when people like Mike are, are saying like, this is dumb, you don't get it. Like, we have anxiety and depression just like you do. It's like, well, the point is that a lot of people don't have these resources. And again, like I said at the beginning, I want to focus on the solution. And like, like I, like I said, I think Jake. I want to give Jake Paul the benefit of the doubt that his heart was in the right place when he was saying that. But like, I think all of us need to direct people to professionals. Like, I don't ever want to give you guys the impression that I am like this end all be all. You know, I just know what works for me, right? And maybe it can work for you but you should always see a professional if you have the resources. But one of the reasons I started this channel was because I know how many people out there do not have access to mental health care, right? So I try to share what I've learned from my own experience, what I've learned from just my research and everything like that. All right, so super bad take from Logan Paul's babysitter, Mike Aflac, or Ma Majlac, okay? But anyways, I just wanted to finish by um, just discussing um, Lynn's DeFranco. So if you don't know who Lynn's DeFranco is, she's an amazing, amazing woman. It's um, Philip DeFranco's wife, in case you didn't put those two things together. Uh, but she has like this organization about um, teaching kids how to like find like credible news sources and things like that. And I think that's super important and it's a super awesome cause. But anyways, she got some backlash last night for replying um, and kind of defending Jake Paul's tweet about anxiety. And after the backlash, she ended up going on Instagram stories and here's what she said. So yeah, that's what it said and people are really upset about it because they're taking it personally and like, you know, it's, 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 I don't know how to say this. Okay, so they're taking it as him saying that like, you are in control of your anxiety. You are the reason you have anxiety. You can totally get over it by yourself, blah, blah, blah. And, and people, who can't relate to that sentiment are very pissed about it. I also cannot relate to that sentiment. I know that my anxiety is a chemical thing in my brain that I cannot control. However, as we know, and as I hope the people who are responding to him and are mad at him know, anxiety hits everybody differently. And I think that for all of the people who don't relate to his tweet, there are people who do relate to it. And there are people who will see him and think, you know what, he's talking. I didn't realize Instagram was starting to cut us off again, but here we are. Um, there are people who will see that and relate to it and think that, you know, Jake Paul's talking about his anxiety and he has anxiety. So that makes me feel better about having it too. Um, I think we're all so quick to jump on people who make statements um, that don't apply to us. And then that for some reason hits us wrong in our brain. Like, 
Um, something I like to say, I, I didn't make this up. I forget where I heard it though, but it's if it, if it don't apply, let it fly. If Jake's tweet did not apply to you, let it go. There's no, in my opinion, and I never in a million years thought I'd stand up for Jake Paul, but on this one specific situation, I will. Also, we forget that he's young. Um, it was it wasn't till a few years ago. I'm 30 now. It wasn't till a few years ago that I realized that anxiety hits everybody different. There's a possibility. I mean, he is very, so there is a possibility that he doesn't realize that anxiety hits people differently. He doesn't realize the severity for some people. He doesn't realize that, you know, just going for a walk can not really solve a problem, but you know what it can do? Going for a walk can help. Uh, I mean, there are some days that I can't even go for a walk, but you know what? I don't feel like there was harm meant by this tweet. And of course, before you, when you have such a big audience, you should do your research, especially before talking about mental health. Um, but I just, people freaking out about this specific thing. It's, ugh, it's noise. It doesn't, mm, it's gross. So everyone mark this on your calendars, February 17th. 2020, the day Lindsay DeFranco stood up for Jake Paul. So yes, I just wanted to share my opinion on what she said um, because I think I think she's correct, and I'm I'm glad she. You know, it's hard. Like a lot of us don't realize how hard it is. Like I even sit down and ask myself, like, should I defend this person? Will I get backlash if I defend this person? So it takes some courage to defend somebody like Jake Paul. So. Big ups to Liz, Linz DeFranco for doing that, right? But I agree and disagree with her, right? So she talks about how her anxiety, you know, she has debilitating anxiety based on a chemical imbalance. And she talks about the positive. And I think we should always look at the positive because like she says, like there are some people who are gonna benefit from what Jake Paul said, right? But again, circling back to the solution, like I will never forget, I will never forget Killer Mike in some interview a long time ago, I want to find it, just, it's always stuck in my head because it made so much sense. But anyways, Killer Mike was talking on a, a late night show um, when they were talking about just, you know, um, how to help uh, African-American youth, right? And this is a topic that I'm passionate about, um, being half black and stuff. But anyways, he, he talked about how one of the best things people can do is if you are, you know, from a privileged, a uh, white neighborhood or position or whatever, the best thing you can do is go to black colleges, black high schools, black elementary schools, and teach them the things that you learned on how to how to succeed. And like, like what a dope solution. You know what I mean? Like what an awesome solution. Because that's the issue. So many people, they don't know what they don't know, right? That's one of the reasons I make I make these videos. Because people don't know what they don't know. So I try to discuss how, you know, things with therapy works, um, how, you know, some of the science behind mental health works, some of the statistics, right? Like I'm a big nerd and I read all these books and studies and, you know, articles on this stuff and you might not know these things. But anyways, going back to Linz DeFranco's Instagram, I, I do believe that we, when we talk about mental health, any of us who have an audience, when we talk about mental health, we need to talk about solutions. So, like Linz DeFranco discusses how she, you know, she has this chemical thing in her brain, you know, that causes her anxiety, right? Like I have a generalized anxiety disorder. I'm on mental health meds. So I have no way, absolutely no way of knowing what's going on in Linz DeFranco's life. I don't know if she does therapy. I don't know if she does medication. But, but what I do know, what I do know is that I believe that all of us with some kind of audience should be on here talking about solutions so like i think that's where jake paul missed the mark um you know not to you know isolate lens defranco but i i just if any other influencers are watching this i think we all need to do a better job talking about resources right like encourage people like it's one thing to not feel so alone right like lens defranco said how uh jake paul's video might have helped people not feel alone like that's cool not feeling alone in your struggles is amazing right but for most of us it only gets us so far you know so it's like okay cool you don't feel so alone here's what you should do next you should talk to your doctor about it 
You should see if you can uh, go to a therapist. Does your insurance cover therapy? How much is a therapist, right? Oh, you can't afford either? Here's some links to some resources for therapy. You see what I mean? Um, a lot of states have government funded mental health um, uh, clinics, right? Where you can go and get medications refilled, speak to a therapist, speak to a psychiatrist, all that stuff. So make sure you check out the description. There will be a link to SAMHSA that is specifically here in the United States. These are mental health services. But again, like I said, go watch Tiffany Ferg's video. She does a, a portion on Medicare for all. So for all of you who care about mental health and you're struggling to get mental health help, like really, really take a look at which candidates are talking about Medicare for all. Like I, I don't get sick, all right? Like I get a cold or a flu once a year, maybe. This is the problem. And mental health care is not, is not covered adequately in the United States, right? Even when it comes to addiction treatment. So that that is where I am all for Medicare for all, okay? And the one thing I'll say is, you know, Tiffany Ferg didn't cover this aspect, but like a lot of people say, how are we gonna pay for it? How are we gonna pay for it? When you realize how much the United States is spending on our military compared to every other nation out there, you're like, okay, maybe we could maybe we could reallocate some funds, okay? We got the biggest baddest military out there. Like at this point we're just we're just becoming hoarders, okay? So we just took a little bit, just a little bit from that budget, we could afford some Medicare for all. All right? You could tax the wealthy all you want and things like that. But I think the military budget just boop borrow a little bit from over there. Anyways, I've talked way too long. Let me know your thoughts on the subject down in the comments below. Also make sure that you check out the video on the other channel. Stay tuned for the Scientology video. And there's some other resources down in the description below. Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying, uh, you know, the Rewired Soul merch, as well as the mental health books that I've written over at therewiredsoul.com, like Rewire Your Anxiety. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.